Hello and welcome to this video. Yeah, this is the video on the chapter about the Catalan. So the Catalan opening is an important part of our repertoire because it will very frequently be on the board because after d4, d5, knight f3, knight f6, we play g3 and very often black will play with e6, bishop e7 most of the time and castle. And after c4, we will get what we usually call a Catalan. Yeah, what exactly is a Catalan, by the way? We should define that. The normal move order for the Catalan looks like this. Three, five, four. Mostly they go here, knight f3, castles, castles. Well, this is the most common position in the Catalan. And the Catalan is usually characterized by this central pawn formation, a pawn formation that is also well known in the Queen's Gambit declined, but with white having fianchettoed instead of choosing a more classical setup with knight c3 and bishop g5 and e3, for example. In our move order, we delay the move c4, but ultimately this will be the main position that we will study in our chapter here and as part of our repertoire as well. So our way, our way to get to this would be knight f3, knight f6, g3, e6, bishop g2, bishop e7, castle, castle, c4. And we get to this um, position that we just looked at. Now, after d4, d5, knight f3, black does not necessarily need to play knight f6 first to be um, in this chapter or to transpose into lines of this chapter they can also play e6, that is possible, but it doesn't have much independent value. Yeah, we simply play g3, bishop g2 all of the time, and if black plays some knight f6, bishop e7, or bishop d6, we will transpose. Of course, um, all through this chapter, there are ways for black to opt out of a Catalan. Yeah, they can all the time, let's say after knight f6, g3, e6, bishop g2, black could play a move like b5, for example, which is a separate chapter, the anti-c4 chapter about b5 setups. Or they could play c5, castles, takes, and this is the reversed Grunfeld. So it's only the Catalan in this chapter if black is not going for an early c5 or b5, or for that matter also an early b6, which after, for example, here, 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 is a Queen's Indian. So we are um, talking about lines where black is uh, first and foremost trying to develop the king side and castle quickly. Now, d5, knight f3, as mentioned, e6 is purely transpositional in that regard. We play uh, after knight f6 the move g3, and now e6 is the way to castle as quickly as possible. So we play bishop to g2. Now, um, an important point to mention again, I already did in the intro chapter, but um, about the general move order concept, is to mention that here the move c4 would be a main line Catalan, a traditional more common move order for the Catalan. The difference about playing this here or bishop g2 is mostly two lines that black now has available. The first one is the move bishop b4 check, which enjoys a very um, solid reputation. The idea of this check is that after the normal reply bishop d2, black goes back to e7, and then he is basically claiming that this extra move does hurt white. And um, in some regard, this is definitely true. If we later examine the closed Catalan, when we do that, we'll see that very often this is a good spot for the knight, and the bishop often wants to be on b2 rather. So this is a slightly annoying line, but more problematic from a repertoire perspective is the move he takes c4. And this gives... Um, black white choice after the best reply bishop g2 yeah here black has a million i mean that's a slight exaggeration but not so much he's got tons of moves he's got 
b5, a6, knight c6, bishop d7, knight d7, and so on. Check again, yeah, c6, whatever. It's it's a uh, it's it's amazing. Black can play all kinds of things, and oftentimes it gets rather sharp and concrete with white being a pawn down and um, yeah, playing in gambit style. This is not bad for white. Please don't uh, misunderstand me here. It's not bad for white, but it is a really huge theoretical effort, and I prefer to not allow this. With um, move order bishop g2, we can do um, exactly that. The only drawback of this move order would be that black now has these opportunities of c5 or b5, which we um, have dealt in other chapters. And I mean, this is interesting. These moves are interesting for black, but I think I provided enough um, interesting ideas in the other chapters to fight them. And this is basically the price you pay for um, yeah, avoiding lots of very theoretical um to very theoretical lines after c4 still if you um at a later stage want to actually allow that to yeah get into those sharp lines not a bad thing to do in the long run just for variety's sake so we play bishop um, g2 and now here um the main options for black that we need to um check in this chapter are bishop e7 and bishop to d6. Those two developments are very natural. Um, again, there are many ways for black to transpose outside of this of this chapter, like c5 and b5 and b6, as we said. Now, things that um, we need to check, as I said, mostly the two bishop moves, but there are two other lines that are worth checking. One is the move knight to c6. That looks odd, yeah, I I agree, but it is seen sometimes, in particular on the club level. Now, the important thing here to remember is that we castle first. We usually do, so this is not a big deal. It's just that if we somehow accidentally would play c4 here, black has the option to capture, which leads us into one of those sharp gambit-style lines. Um, oftentimes, gambit style, you, know, you don't have to sacrifice every time. But still, this is something that I want to avoid. So we simply castle as we usually do. And now black will probably play bishop e7 or bishop d6. Um, and uh, yeah, a, a quick look at those lines uh, doesn't hurt. We definitely now want to play c4. This is just a matter of timing. We want c4, we just wait um, until a good moment arises. Here, um, we should be quite nicely better. If black now castles, we play knight bd2, cover the pawn, and in the long run, we can prepare the move e4, which is a standard idea in the Catalan. Um, this is just um, an important thing to consider. The bishop on g2 is just better than the bishop on c8, and often the bishop here can be helpful in supporting e4 later. So. This is very nice for us. Um, black can also take, but after knight d2, we are not um, having any problems to get the pawn back, and then we definitely will be better. And they cannot play b5 because of the very direct reply, knight e5, and the diagonal here is, of course, a big problem. If black plays knight takes d4, we shouldn't even take on a8. And this is hanging. so. We have a better option we just take here and this is um, a great advantage for white yeah? black takes queen takes we see that there's just too much going on now this is completely hanging and knight c6 is also in the position so this is completely terrible um in comparison after this bishop e7 looks a little bit better but white is still of course better we play c4 and now the only somewhat interesting move is maybe to take. If they if they don't uh, take, we have the easy plan again of going knight d2, maybe a3 to prevent any knight b4 moves after queen c2. Yeah, and ultimately queen c2, e4. It's a standard plan that we will see a lot also in any closed uh, Catalan that will come up. Relatively best maybe is the capture, after which queen a4 is going to be good for white because we get the pawn back and um, something like this is 
definitely better for us. Eh? We have this extra center pawn, like D and E pawn against just the E pawn. And uh, the only thing that you need to do is to not trade too much here. For example, after queen d5, please don't take on d5, but rather move the queen away and gain an additional tempo on the black queen. So we don't want to trade. Thank you.